Hi, I'm Kate Strutz. I'm clinical psychologist and director at Redstone PBS and I'm going to be talking to you today about understanding behaviours that challenge and the reason why this is so important when taking a positive behavioural support approach. I'm also going to be talking to you about understanding the reasons behind behaviours that we find difficult and the complex system that can develop between carer behaviour and behaviours that challenge. Good evidence for positive behaviour support has developed over the last 15 years and there are references at the end of this presentation. It's primarily a behavioural approach to meet a person's needs and to support the development of new skills. And in doing so, behaviours that challenge become redundant. Years of research has identified that there's actually a small number of reasons for behaviours that challenge, and we call these the functions of behaviour. The two main functions are gaining and avoiding. We all seek to gain social attention, items or activities, sensory stimulation, and we all seek to avoid pain and discomfort or tasks or situations that we find difficult. People often talk about behaviours communication, and that's right, but we need to understand which of these functions that communication is about. It's also important to know that one behaviour may have different functions and different behaviours may have the same function. There are a number of factors that increase a person's vulnerability to presenting with behaviours that challenge, and they are biological factors, such as sensory differences or disabilities and physical health issues, social factors, such as life events, communication issues and social isolation, and context factors, which is the behaviour of other people in the environment that the person lives or is educated. In terms of the environmental context, a complex system can develop between carer behaviour and behaviours that challenge. So a behaviour occurs, the carer wants or needs to avoid that impact of that behaviour because it's often dangerous for themselves, the person or others. The carer responds and in responding, the person gains or avoids something. The behaviour then stops and in similar situations in the future, the behaviour occurs again because it's been the most effective way of the person getting their needs met. Often carers and the person can become stuck in this cycle and the key to breaking it really is understanding the function of the behaviour so we can support carers to teach and maintain alternative behaviours that make the behaviours that challenge redundant. I hope you found this video useful and if so please feel free to share it or use it in your work setting. Look out for our next video on key elements of positive behaviour support. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel or join us on Facebook at Redstone PBS.